All right, so welcome. Um, today is Wednesday, June 28th, the last three days of the month, craziness. And just as a reminder, tomorrow is the last Thursday of the month for rank advancement. So if you are shooting for Emerald to get free leads for July um, and you have not been Emerald before, tomorrow is um, the cutoff unless you do an exception form, which is a whole big other thing. Um, but just keep that in mind and there's still plenty of time. Um, so our sneak peek group is going very well. I changed the outline a little bit. It's a little less um, word vomity and a little bit more precise. I feel like people are doing a lot better with it, which is great. That wraps up on Friday. Um, and we have that fun blue apron giveaway for anyone that signed up yesterday through Monday. So the 27th to July 2nd, July 3rd, sorry. Um, and then we don't have anything starting next week. So the holiday and the 11th, we have the free Mason jar eating plan group. And then we go into, um, shift shop already, which Meredith is going to talk about the shift shop, um, pilot group that we are doing as well as, um, our regular challenge group. So for those of you guys that haven't gotten in the shift shop pilot group, basically the way it's working is that people have to be on on demand, um, or purchase shift shop, the DVDs, if they want to be in there. Right now, we're running through the calendar that Sean T created for the four weeks leading up to Shift Shop. So we started last Monday for the four weeks, and we're using that BOD calendar. I am I don't ever require Shakeology to be in a challenge group. I definitely let people in that just purchase on demand or a program. But because, and Meredith will touch on this, because the Shift Shop uh, meal plan is a little bit more difficult than the other plans. I am strongly, strongly, strongly recommending that they get um, Shakeology or the performance line because I want to see them be successful on the meal plan. Um, and then we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a push for another two week free trial the, the day that the shift shop test group launches on the 17th or the pilot group. Um, and then people can actually try it for two weeks. They won't be able to finish the program, but they can at least get a taste of it before committing to the program or Shakeology. And I will let those people in for those two weeks to try it. So those are kind of my thoughts on it. Um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. Um, but I am going to introduce Meredith. So Meredith and I met on Market Council. Um, there's like six of us, I think. I don't know how many of us, but right now. Um, and I just reached out to her and said, hey, I want to exchange calls because I knew she was in the shift shop test group and had a ton of value to add to us. She is a six-star diamond, a two-time elite coach, top 200, a success club, all-star, a legend. Um, she's actively been coaching for about three years. She was able to leave her full-time job, which is super cool. Um, and she is engaged, so getting married, I wanna say in the fall, in the fall. Um, and she is a fellow dog mama. So I'm gonna let her take it away. She's gonna talk to us about kind of shift shop and how important being a product of the product really is. So go for it. Yay. Thanks, Jillian. That's so funny. I looked up and I'm like, Jillian, and it says Whitney Webb. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. But um, anyways, hi guys. I'm a little bit nervous. It's been like a little while since I've guest spoke on calls. So if I talk really fast and start like foaming at the mouth, <laughs> I might need to just take a minute and drink some water. But I'm excited to be here and to talk to you guys about the shift shop, but also about being a product to the product, which I'm sure a lot of you hear so much about and you're probably like, okay, yeah, like, I get it, but um, I want to talk to you a little bit about my story starting out um, as a coach and just how being a product of the product really allowed me to build the business um, because I was not someone who was in shape when I got into this. So I have a slideshow to show you guys, but I like to kind of um, see everyone's faces. I'm someone that really responds to energy. So just by show of hands, I want to know, and this is not to like down like to talk down to anyone but how many of you have actually done a program from start to finish like to the t 
like 100%. Okay, that's awesome. That's so awesome. And it's okay if your hand is not raised because I was someone for the longest time that didn't, didn't do it to a T. Like I like would, but I'd always like cut corners on the meal plan and I'd have like my wine on the weekends. I'm actually wearing a shirt that says squat now wine later. So like wine and champagne are a big part of my life. My uh, fiance is in the liquor industry. So, I mean, that's just kind of like we go out, we have fun. And that was always something that I wasn't really willing to give up. And I'm not saying that you have to, but I think when you can experience a program from start to finish, like 100% putting in all of your effort, it will change your business and it will change your mindset and your belief about this company and what we represent. And I, or I shouldn't say the company, but um, the products and what we represent. And I think that's something that if you do that for yourself, it is going to change you know, not even just your business, but, but you and your perception of yourself and what you're capable of. So that's kind of like my, my spiel and the overview of this, um, this topic tonight, but I'm going to share my slides just so I stay on track. Um, I tend to get really talky and I can go off topic. So I want to make sure I'm staying on task here, but if you guys have questions, this is some kind of general information, but if you have um, specific questions about the shift shop, I know we're getting closer to the launch that I can probably share more than I was able to share like a month ago. Um, so if you guys have product specific stuff or if you're curious about the program, I'm happy to share, you know, at least some, some input um, on that. So I want to talk about how to rock the launch. And really what I think this boils down to is just being a product of the product and sharing your journey through and through. But rewinding the clock and showing you just a little bit more about me, um, telling you a little bit more about me. This picture on the far left is a picture of me from, I think it was like 2012, 2011, 2012. That's when I had, I'd graduated college and I was an athlete my whole life. So I was someone who was always relatively in shape, always active, but through college, I was obviously having a good time too, work hard, play hard. And I had gained a lot of weight, but always kind of maintained like a, like a fit fat girl body, like a skinny fat body, because I wasn't really doing the right things to become healthy from the inside out. It was like I was doing enough to sort of stay somewhat in shape, like from my perspective, but I really wasn't. And it really started to deteriorate my self-confidence. And um, just, I was make, doing things that just weren't, weren't good. And it was just like this vicious cycle. Um, and a lot of it boiled down to, to drinking and to eating and to just like avoiding doing the hard things that I knew would make me feel better um, inside. So that's when I originally signed up to be a coach, believe it or not, was June of 2012. So I just celebrated my five-year anniversary as a coach, but I really didn't do anything as a coach or really with the programs for over two years. Um, I tried them for about like, I think I did Insanity for maybe 12 days and then I quit like 10 to 12 days. And I was like, this is too hard. I hate it. It doesn't work because I didn't lose like 10 pounds in a week. And I just, I chalked it up as a scam and went on with my life. But my upline's upline is Elizabeth Harkey, who I'm sure a lot of you know. Um, and I was kind of, I was friends with her before Beachbody. So I followed her journey through social media somewhat, but I actually did end up unfollowing her at one point because I was like, just so like sick of seeing her positivity and everything like going awesome in her life. And I think there was a lot of envy, but also a lot of like disbelief or lack of belief in myself that I could do what she had done. So fast forward then two years, I saw that her life had drastically changed, not even just from a business perspective, but from a like physical perspective. She seemed like a different person. She seemed positive, And I wanted more of that in my life. So at this point I was working for Oracle, which is um, a big software company, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And I was doing field sales for them. So I was on the road like 80, 85% of the time. And so I didn't have a whole lot of opportunities to make it to a gym or to get into a schedule with classes or any of that stuff. So I gave into the home workout program mm -hmm. thing and started with this. Uh, actually, this is a after picture in the green sports bra that was like 30 days in. Um, and I had lost like 15 pounds at that point. Um, and then did my first round of, of 21 day fix. So you can see this is over the course of like six months. I had a pretty drastic change. Um, but more than that, I was sharing it in the process and I shared it from day one. It was July of 2014. I shared the day that I started with my new healthy mindset and I shared something every single day, just one post a day for 100 days. And I hashtagged it, um, 100, 100 days of healthy. And I, I promised myself that I would post something that was either making me happy, healthy, or inspired every single day. Not so much in the hopes that I would like create a business out of it. That was really not the intention, but it was really for my own personal accountability and the hopes that 
I could kind of flip the script and what I had created as my reality, which was the fact that I was this work hard, play hard girl that everyone knew I'd be the person that would go out to like Tuesday night trivia or Sunday fun day or whatever. I knew I needed to kind of reel it in and change things and sort of rebrand myself in a sense. Um, so that's what I did. So two years later, um, you know, fast forwarding, I went to my first coach summit, which was in, um, June, July of 2015. And like Jillian, I went there with, I had one coach with me. I slept on the hotel, the floor of a hotel room of one of my other friends that was there and, um, really couldn't like even conceptualize what this could do for me and what my future would be with Beachbody. But when I went there, it was really put into perspective just how huge this opportunity is and what's at the core of this, which is, you know, being a better version of yourself and being the best version of you. So you can be the best version of yourself for other people. So when I saw that, I was like, you know what, this is like a really cool concept. Like I have to just kind of keep doing what I'm doing, but I have to help other people do that too. So when I came back from that summit, I had a whole new determination to like turn this into a business where I was inspiring others and helping them have the same experience that I had had. And that really stemmed from being a product of the product and working on yourself from the inside out. So when I came back, like over the next six months, we actually went from being a barely diamond team to being an elite team of 2015. So if you guys, if that's a goal of yours, I know it's June, you can still make it happen. <laughs> you totally can. So I'm here to tell you that, um, first of all, but then in the second year, it was one of those things where we gained this momentum and I realized it was just about doing the programs and sharing that journey just as I did in that first 100 days. So now getting into, um, well, and as Julian said, then a year later, I left my corporate job in June of 2016. So I'm coming up on my one year anniversary of leaving corporate. And it's been a tough year, um, to be honest. And I know this isn't what Julian wanted me to talk about, but since I left my corporate job, it hasn't been just rainbows and sunshine, like living the coach life. Like I've really sort of had a roller coaster ride, figuring out like how to, how to do the coach thing full time and still feel like I'm relevant and feel like I'm not just another coach out there and, and all this stuff. And, um, in that process, I did lose some belief in myself and I struggled a lot with my, my confidence as a leader and as a coach and as someone who could really do this as a business. And I don't know where all that self doubt came from, but I do think that a lot of it had to do with the fact that I had gotten out of phase one, which was being a product of product pouring into myself rather than going to management mode of my team and focusing on sharing that authentically every single day with others so that they can get a glimpse of it and experience it for themselves. So fast forward now to like January, February of this year, I was really kind of feeling like the, the roller coaster highs and lows of the, of the coaching tide. And I decided to create a group that was going to be just more about like, I don't care about elite. I don't care about star diamond ranks. I don't care about any of that. I just need to help people get results. That is my mission. That is what I'm here for. So I went back into, you know, giving myself 100% to Insanity Max 30 and sharing that with other people in my challenge group. And I saw them do it. I saw them duplicating what I was doing and getting these results and feeling fired up. And all of a sudden it was like the spark was relit. All of a sudden that ripple effect started to happen. The same one that happened in 2015 that had lit me up was happening again. And right on the heels of that, right before Punta Cana, I found out that I was going to be part of the shift shop test group. So that was like, I think the stars aligning where all of a sudden I was going, wow, like all of a sudden I'm having fun with this again. And now this comes into my, I don't want to say it comes into my lap, but it's an opportunity that's then given to me to really take this and run with it. So I need to give it 100%. I cannot cut corners and I have to really show people what's possible with this program. So here are my results. Um, so this on the left day one, this is after doing insanity max 30 and then like living it up in Punta Cana. I was <laughs> definitely having a good time, but, um, but I didn't realize like at that point I'd sort of capped myself thinking like, this is as far as I can go. This is like, this is in shape for me. This is good. But when I gave it hundred percent for shift shop for two full rounds, like I was able to reach a new level of fitness that I had really never been to in my life. Um, so I followed the program to a T for 42 days. Um, two full rounds. I shared every day on social media. I lost a little over five pounds and almost six inches. Um, and this month, like after having months of struggle, I hit success club 20 pretty early in the month. And I have seven new coaches that enrolled this month. That's like, I haven't done that since like 2015. And I'm going to tell you guys how I did that. I see some things popping up in the chat. So I just want to make sure I'm not ignoring you guys. Um, okay, cool. You know, we can talk about that, but, um, I'm going to keep going. So we all know what being a product of the product really means, right? Like we know like, okay, I got to just like drink my shake and do my program and stuff. But the 
gut check that I want you to ask yourself is, am I actually doing it? Am I actually doing it? Am I actually tracking my food? And I'm not saying that you're not, but sometimes we all need to have that reality check. And one of the things I did in that challenge group that really relit my spark was I started once again, like downloading the 21 day fix tracker app. And I was tracking my intake every single day. And I did that through the shift shop um, program as well and, and test group. And if not for that, I don't know if I would have gotten as good of results. I don't know if I would have been able to help other people get those results because I'm giving them a system to follow because I'm doing it myself. So I really want you guys to think about that and say, okay, am I actually giving it a hundred percent or am I like kind of faking it? Because it's people can sniff it out, you know, and more than that, you're not going to feel as empowered as you could if you gave it 100%. And if you really, really followed the program. So I keep talking about this gut check. So when's the last time you went all in and you shouldn't need a test group to boost your business. So I know a lot of people, and I was one of them when I saw Elizabeth Harkey get into the hardcore test group last year and she hit like success club 55 or something in the next month. I was like, what the heck? Like she's so lucky. It's the test group. And I was like giving the test group the credit, but it's honestly not the test group. It's the mental commitment that you make to that because guys, we all, nobody knows what the heck these programs are. Every once in a while, you'll meet someone who knows, you know, P90X, 21 Day Fix, like they've heard of it, but no one's actually, most people haven't done it to a T. So you could take anything. You could go back to Shaleen Extreme and do a Shaleen Extreme test group if you want and share the crap out of that for the you know, 30 day program or whatever and get people excited about it and rallied around it. You can pick whatever you want, but you have to get yourself in the test group mindset. You do not need a corporate test group to put you in that mindset. It's up to you. So I want you to ask yourself too, as part of this gut check is when is the last time you were excited about your goals? And this was something that I personally had to ask myself because for so long, you know, going back to, um, leaving my corporate job last year, that was a big goal of mine. That was something that excited me. I didn't think it was going to happen as quickly as it did. I kind of took a little bit of a leap of faith. Um, but it excited me. And then when I got there, I forgot to set another goal. I forgot to create another goal beyond that vision because I didn't really, I had sort of, has anyone read the big leap about upper limits? So the big leap is it's by an author. It's right here. Uh, the big leap by Gay Hendricks. Um, it's all about upper limiting and how sometimes we put caps on ourselves for how far we can go. Not necessarily because we don't want to succeed, but it's almost like, because if we don't put in the effort, then at least we have a reason. We have something to point our finger to as to why we didn't achieve that goal. We can say, well, I had those donuts on Sunday or, well, I didn't really follow the meal plan or, oh, I didn't really want to be in that test group anyways. Like you give yourself excuses. You give yourself an out because that's easier than saying I gave it 100% and I still didn't meet my goal. But at the end of the day, you're still going to wonder what if you're still going to wonder like, what if I could take this to the next level? What if I could build a six figure business? What if I could like, you know, change a hundred lives this month? You have to give yourself something to be, and maybe those goals don't excite you, but find something that excites you so that every time you're setting a goal, you're not setting the same goal. So take success club, for instance, if you hit success club every month, like you hit success club five or 10, I challenge you to set a higher goal for the month following. So if you're someone that always hit success club 10, I'm going to ask you like to think about it. Do you kind of let off the gas once you hit success club 10? If you're like, that's my non-negotiable. And then you get there and you're like, okay, we'll just wait till next month. And I know I personally, and a lot of my team used to like slow play people. Cause I'm going to be like, well, I'm going to save them for next month. So then I can hit success club next month. I don't know if anyone else has done that, but I really, really encourage you to, if you hit success club 10, make your goal for next month, success club 20 and keep working until you get to that goal, because then you have something to strive for. You have something to stretch for. So whether it's success club, whether it's a physical goal, whether it's a financial goal, set a goal for yourself that you have not hit yet that you're excited about. And I promise you that when you share that openly in your, your posts on social media and with your teams, your enthusiasm and excitement is going to get other people excited about it. So, you know, I want you to get excited about your business because it's contagious. Like when you, I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm like fired up about this, but I get so excited to share this with people. And I think that that's why I was able to sign up seven coaches this month already, because they came to me being like, I don't know what you're doing, but I need to be part of it because I can tell you love it. You're having fun. And, and I've been following you, but one of your posts or something about what you put up lately has convinced me to try it. So, you know, like people follow you and they need to see that you keep setting goals and keep working towards them. So that's just kind of a 
a little bit of a tangent here, but I really think that that's so crucial and vital to your success in being a product of the product. And that really boils down to your enthusiasm and belief about what's in the box. I don't know how many of you heard Carl's, um, this was like, I think he's from his surge last year where he talked about the belief in the box. Like we give someone a box with the products, whether it's shift shop, P90X, the all access membership, whatever it is, we give them the box, but what really makes them successful is our belief about what's in the box. And the only way you can build that belief is by you going all in and blazing that trail for someone and showing them what's possible, not just because you show them, but because you show yourself what you're capable of. So belief, you know, do you sincerely believe that what you have to offer is life changing? And I think that that's why, I mean, guys, I was in technology sales. That's what my, my full-time job was for four and a half years before I went full-time with Beachbody. And I, won't, I don't want to say I didn't believe in it because I know that Oracle had a great product, but I, it wasn't life changing. And I think that, you know, that was something that boiled down to, it was a sale. I was trying to meet a quota. I was trying to sell someone on something about why our characteristics and features were better than Microsoft. But at the end of the day, a database is a database. Okay. Like for this, this is something that I don't think there's anyone else out there in this industry that has something that we have or comparable to what we have with the, the coaching support, Shakeology, the programs that are 30 minutes or less and can change your entire physique and mental state. You know, we have something that's life-changing, but you have, to, you have to instill that belief in yourself in order to be successful. And I think a way to do that is to give yourself that evaluation of how your life has changed through Beachbody. And if you can't like answer that question right off the bat, or if your brand's making new, the number one thing you can do is commit to a program 100% and see it through. Um, and then and do your personal development, side note. <laughs> that has to be a big part of it too. But showing the journey and the climb in that process, and I know that's a really scary thing for some people. Um, I, it was terrifying for me when I put up that first day one post in my 100 days of healthy. Like it was like a picture of my water and I was like shaking when I hit post. I was like, what are people gonna think? You know, I was so worried about the judgment and what everyone else was gonna think. But guys, everyone else's opinion doesn't pay your bills. Like your passion, your enthusiasm, that kind of stuff, that's what's going to change your life, not what someone else is thinking, okay? So it's up to you to show that journey and the climb because someone out there needs to see it. Someone needs you to be their lighthouse and like their beacon of hope and the fact that, you know, they, they can overcome whatever that they're, they're struggling with because you did, it, you did it too, okay? So the key points that people want to know, what is it, does it work, and can they do it too? And it's our job to show them. You can't assume that people know. And I think that this is something that's become really clear to me lately is that I post every single day about this stuff, every single day. And people still have no idea what the heck I do. And they have no idea what these programs are. And sometimes that is just because they're not obviously seeing all of the posts. But I think sometimes it, it reminds me that I have to explain this as if it's like the first time anyone's ever seen it in my post. And I have to break it down in very simple language, show them videos, show them through Instagram story, you know, those things so they can kind of get a peek into what my life is as a coach, but also as someone who's committed to their health and fitness. So going all in. So this is what I would expect you to do um, to go all in with, with the shift shop, or if you want to do a different program, but I'll talk a little bit more about shift shop specifically, um, is that videos are, are the way to go right now. I'm listening. This is a little bit a little behind the curve on this, but um, the Ask Gary V show, or not the Ask Gary V show, the, um, what's his book? Ask Gary V. Um, I'm listening to that on Audible, and it's from like last year at this time, early 2016, and he's talking about how everyone's attention is on video, and that's why Instagram story, Snapchat, Facebook story is now a thing, like all of that is huge. And for those of you that work full time, like this is a godsend because you can literally take videos for five to 10 seconds throughout your day and share like a whole you know movie of your life essentially even if it's just during your workout or if it's getting ready for your workout or if it's a little blip from your personal development um, that is something where you can get people's attention there without feeling like you need to write some life-changing post every single day also so show what you're doing for workouts um, you know, if you use the hands-free version of Instagram story you can show little moves and, and parts of your workout and give people a real-time glimpse into what you're doing. So if you are brave enough to go live on Facebook, that can be really invigorating, like really like it can be a rush when you do that. And if you're doing it while you're working out, ask people to give you support, ask them to give you like 
hearts and love while you're doing the last move of your workout, because that's what people relate to is that struggle. Um, you know, cause everyone knows how it feels to be at the end of your workout and be like, Oh, you know, I got to push through. And I think that that's really inspiring. Um, but act as if people are seeing it for the first time every single day. So as coaches, like, and I felt like this during the shift shop where I'm like, okay, sharing this every single day, are people sick of hearing this? Cause I'm literally posting about these little markers and posting about you know, our agility drills and our strength like, every single day. But if you're doing the right things by adding new people to your network and connecting with pe new people every single day, you're going to have someone viewing yourself for the first time almost every day. So you have to act as if you're talking to that person and don't be afraid of feeling a little bit like a broken record. Cause that's just, that's part of the, part of the deal here. You're going to feel like that, but that's how people get to know you. And that's how they get to trust you with that consistency, which I'll go into in the next slide. Um, but you can link your stories together. So if you write posts, you can refer back to other posts. So if it all kind of like flows like a story, that's how you really get to have people that follow you because then they want to refer back to your other posts and it's all connected. Uh, but as Jillian said, the meal plan is a little bit different with Shift Shop and it's vital. I really, really don't think that I would have gotten the results that I got if, um, if I hadn't followed the meal plan. So I encourage you not to cut the corners. Um, they made this plan so simple. So I really, really, you guys are going to love it. I know I did. They lay out like Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Tuesday, Thursday, wait, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and it's every other day. So you give two lineups and they alternate days and then they give you a grocery list and the meals to have. Like it's, it couldn't be more like foolproof. It's so, so easy. So sharing that and making it duplicatable for your challengers and showing them what you're eating. So that way they can see like, oh, okay, well, she's, she's still having peanut butter. She's still having sweet potatoes. You know, you're showing them that you're eating real food. I think that that really helps. Um, and keeping in mind that what that, uh, 100%, 110% does not have to be the rest of your life. So if part of your vision, I, I equate this to like leaving your full-time job. If part of your vision is to leave your full-time job and you are working your butt off right now and you're running on low amounts of sleep, you have to know that that's a temporary sacrifice. It's basically a down payment on a future abundant life. And that's what I think about with these programs is it doesn't mean you have to be doing countdown to competition or the shift shop for the rest of your entire life. It, but it does mean if you do it for those 21 days, it's a sacrifice that is going to return tenfold and that you're going to create new habits for yourself. Um, I know for me personally, I'm like grain free now after doing the shift shop meal plan, which is something I never would have done, but I have crazy energy without eating grains. So I'm like, all right, cool. That's going to be a lifestyle change for me. But, you know, adding in some of those other things that make me, you know, back to my normal lifestyle, it's, it's kind of an ebb and flow thing. So I think it's something you can teach to people and have them find what works for them in that process. So rocking the launch through sharing. So biggest thing you guys is to be yourself. I think throughout this process in sharing the shift shop, um, I've incorporated the plan into my life, but I didn't necessarily change my life for the plan. I didn't like stay home and just eat the plan and not go out. Like I still socialized and was, was a normal person too. And I think that shows that your audience can do this as well. You know, it's realistic for them. So we still went to a wedding. We still went to a Red Sox game. You know, we did all these things that still were life and enjoying ourselves without feeling like we need to be like hermits for the, the three weeks. Um, and tell your story consistently. So I already talked about this, but take people on the journey from start to finish. And this is where they're going to get to know, like, and trust you. And that is like, that is the vital, vital component here is that people are not going to trust you if you're not consistent. And that's actually a quote from John Maxwell. Um, where he says, if you're not consistent, people don't know what you're up to. They, they don't know if you're going to give up on them. They don't know if you're for real, unless you're showing up every day and doing exactly what you say you're going to do. Um, but this is also really crucial is meeting people in the crap. <laughs> and when I say that, it's not putting yourself on a pedestal and saying like, look at me, like I'm doing this program and I'm committed to this meal plan because I'm healthy. Like people don't want to be preached to. They want to know why you're doing that. So if you can share why you started, you know, where you started and why, and this is something where, you know, I, three years in now, I have to constantly go back to where I was in that far left picture of the original picture I showed you guys, because a lot of people don't think I know what it's like to be 25 or 30 pounds overweight. And I was, so, you know, you have to be reminding people of where you were, why you started and not only showing those highlights, you know, being relatable and, and showing people what you're doing to overcome those challenges, but show them where you are now, like what you did to overcome and how people will admire you and love seeing like where you are. There's a lot of people that will cheer you on, but if you don't show them how you got there, there's a disconnect. 
you have to show them the how, which is the programs, which is Beachbody and the community, the challenge groups, all of those things. Um, so how should the launch continue? So a couple more things, and then I'll get into ship shop specifics. Um, is creating curiosity. So I very rarely use Beachbody words. So even with ship shop, I rarely was like, this is the new ship shop program, because what is someone going to do? They're going to go Google ship shop. They're probably going to get bumped into some other coach's page or some Beachbody lead, and now you've lost that person. So I create a lot of curiosity in my post by calling you know, a superfood shake or the new athletic agility style program um, or drill style program. I try to create terms where people are not really sure what I'm doing unless they're already in the know and unless we already have a connection. Um, I don't share links um, externally unless it's like a sign up link for my forms. In that case, I put them in the comments of my post. So never, never, never share the links. Um, and then the sneak peek is coming up July 3rd. So make sure you start sharing that now. Um, I totally dropped the ball on the 19th sneak peek because I was so wrapped up in Sean week that I was just like, I don't want to confuse my audience, but I think that this is a really, really good opportunity for you guys to capitalize on this and expose people to the program before it launches because it's amazing, so, which I'll talk about next. Um, and then always keep in mind adding value. So every post you put up, you want to have a so what factor. So it's, it's cool to put up a post with your agility markers and like, you know, something about Chris Downing, but you have to have some sort of call to action at the end, even if it's so much as like, you know, always here to chat health and fitness if you need help. You know, I'm here to help heart with like a message or something. Something that lets them know you can help them. Because it goes back to that slide where I said people want to know what you're doing, if it works, and if they can do it too. So if you're just showing them what you're doing and that it works and you forget that piece of the, like they can do it too and they can join you, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. So make sure that there's always a so wet factor and give people a reason to come back to your posts. So I do a lot of teaser posts, like I did one earlier today, about hitting a big milestone in my business, which I'm going to share probably tomorrow at this point. Um, but people are like, oh my God, what is it? What is it? You know, and they want to come back. They're following the journey. So don't just like spill everything in one post, make it fun and kind of give people those little breadcrumbs and those little jabs that get them interested in what you're doing enough to come back and see what your big news is or to see your transformation pictures, um, or, you know, whatever you want to share about the journey. And I always try to make people feel some sort of emotion in my posts. So I always try to like if it's humor, sadness, and I, when I say sadness, that's maybe not the right term, but um, going back to like a feeling that I had before I became a coach, like when I was feeling defeated or feeling frustrated, like I try to meet people in that emotion because that's where a lot of my niche is right now. So I want them to know that we can connect on that level. So I connect with them on that, you know, talking about the not so pretty awesome things in life, um, give them some sort of inspiration, which is going to move them to action. Um, or connection, you know, some sort of connection with them. Um, and being inclusive, and I'm so happy to hear Jillian talk about your seven day free groups, um, which you guys have been doing for a long time. So I'm not going to go into detail on this, but um, we just started doing that as a team recently. And it's like exploding everyone's business because it takes away that obstacle of purchase and the, the ickiness that we feel talking to someone and then inviting them to $160 opt in fee. So when you have the free group, I think that that's a really, really amazing way to get people involved. So don't drop the ball on that. Like I just, I challenge you to start talking to people now about the shift shop launch and inviting them to that seven day free trial and converting them to that all access challenge pack afterward. Um, all right. So special notes about the shift shop, and then we can kind of talk about, um, this in a little bit more detail because I know you guys might have questions. Um, but it's an athletic drill style program, but literally anyone can do it. I don't know if anyone um, follows Jamie Sue, Phelps, but she is a coach. She was brought on stage in Punta Cana. So if you guys were there on the, the teal wave, um, she was brought up to work out with, with Chris Downing. And I don't know what her weight is, but I know she has a couple hundred pounds to lose. I'll put it that way. And she's been in the, the shift shop group and like the girl is doing it. She's doing it. She can't, you know, she's not full range of motion. She's not able to do all the moves at the high intensity level, but she's doing it. And it's so, so inspiring. So if you haven't found her on Instagram or you don't see her on Facebook, um, it's Jamie, J-A-I-M-E-E -E, um, Phelps. And she's just incredibly inspiring. So if you have people in your niche or in your demographic that think that this is not a program for them because it's too advanced or it's too high intensity, the answer is no, like literally everyone can do this. So I encourage you to share her story with them um, or someone else, you know, that you might relate to that's been in the test group. But that was really inspiring to me. Um, and it goes along with the message that 
you know, this is all about empowerment and self-love and getting a glimpse of your potential. And, and Chris Downing talks a lot about that in the program. And he talks a lot about it in the test group that working out should not be punishment. It should not be something you're doing to, you know, earn your food or something you're doing to burn off the calories that you, you like ate and are ashamed about last night from last night. Like this should be a thing that you're doing to empower yourself and to like challenge yourself to move beyond your limits so that you can grow not only physically, but mentally. So the messaging in this program is so inspiring and seeing a lot of people on my team who needed this, um, you know, doing the sneak peek, they are so psyched up about this program and it's reigniting the flame and the spark for them. So I really hope that that's going to happen for you guys too, because the, the vibe of this program is totally different than, than any other program I've ever done. Um, the shift shop markers, use those to your advantage if you've ordered them and if you haven't ordered them soon um, and start posting about them because that's something Chris doesn't really talk about this as much, um, but it was in the test group a lot that people were taking their little markers. Does everyone know what I'm talking about? Let me see the markers, the little rubber things. So they're different colors and you need them because he does like call out drills with the colors and you're going to be like, like shuffling and sliding over them and stuff. So I know a lot of people on my team are like, well, can we just use like paper plates or shoes or something? And I'm like, no, <laughs> you need the flat markers. Otherwise you're going to hurt yourself. Um, but what's pretty cool about it is he says the markers need to symbolize something. They need to mean something. So a lot of people were taking Sharpies and writing like their why on their marker, um, or writing like if someone struggles with depression, they wrote depression on that marker. If they struggle with um, self-love or self-confidence, they would write that on there. And every time you do a drill, you slap this marker, it would have to mean that. Like you're like, I'm getting goosebumps, like thinking about it, but he would talk about like, you know, if you want to fight against depression, the best medicine you can give yourself is exercise, exercise and proper nutrition. So every time you slap that marker, you were slapping, you know, the depression away, you were slapping the lack of self-confidence away. And it was like so powerful to see people have these, these shifts, no pun intended with these little rubber markers. So you can really, really use this to your advantage in your challenge groups and within your team. So I encourage you to do that order them now and get your teams thinking about what their why is and what, what their mission is for that 21 days and what's going to empower them through the workout when they want to quit and they look down and see that on that marker. So that's just to me, like you have to have that. Um, and then the meal plan is amazing. So it's, I actually didn't think it was that hard. I've done the, um, ultimate reset before, which was, that was pretty freaking hard, but you have protein on this. Um, you can have dairy, um, there aren't any carbs, like starchy carbs, like bread and pasta and stuff, but you do have um, like more starchy vegetables, like spaghetti squash and um, sweet potatoes and regular potatoes for the first week and into the second. So you're not feeling deprived. Um, and there's also unlimited vegetables. So that's pretty awesome too, because if you're hungry, you can literally eat your heart out with the vegetables and still have awesome results. Um, so that plan was, it's, was amazing. And we can talk more about your specific questions. Um, but someone, Dave McLean from Philadelphia, he's on the Philly market council, lost 17 pounds by like day 10. It was insane. Absolutely insane. So guys, this is like, if you follow the plan, it has a potential and that's obviously not guaranteed for everyone. Um, but even myself, I lost six pounds in the first week and then I ended up gaining muscle back, um, throughout the rest of the program. But like, holy smokes, it's like, it is going to change your metabolism, change your, like your shape. Um, you know, other people did take them the full 21 days to have those results, but if you stick with it, it's going to happen. Um, there's also emphasis on the performance line as well as Shakeology. I meant to put that in there simply because there is a lower carb amount. So you need the Shakeology to really, you know, help replenish those stores and make sure your body's getting the nutrients it needs. Um, and then the performance line, we were encouraged to use Energize for the, for week one, um, energize and recover, I think. No, just energize. And then for week two was energize, hydrate, and recover. Um, and then we also added in recharge as well. And I really think our results were better because of it, because you're going to be pretty sore. <laughs> so having the recover shake was amazing because I really, I could notice the difference on the days that I used it. And there was a few days I didn't have it with me and I was like hurting, hurting the next day. So um, definitely encourage you to use those or give them a try this month. So that was but you can recommend those to your customers and your coaches as well. And then this is just the last little call to action slide, and then we can get into questions. But um, you know, commit 100% to the next, I say 60 days, because I want your mindset to, sh to shift now. You know, going into Summit, I don't know how many of you are going to Summit, but even if you're not, 
you can watch it remotely. And I know there's going to be amazing announcements coming. Um, Carl's so fired up. I know Jillian's in that I'm here to help group too. Like, I think we have some really, really amazing things coming down the pike. And I want you guys to be focused on that and then focus on shift shop for um, the 21 days of the program. And even beyond, if you want to do two rounds, I'm kind of you know planning on everyone doing two rounds and challenge yourself to that 100% commitment and see how your business changes. Um, if you share it every day, every single day, like put up some sort of post about it, um, connect with people. Don't just communicate. And that goes back to your storytelling, making sure that people are getting to know, like, and trust you versus just telling them the facts about the program, providing value constantly in your posts and following up with people. And I know Jillian talked about this on my team call just before we hopped on this, that, you know, the more you follow up with people, it doesn't annoy them. It shows them that you care and giving them access to a program like this that has such a different, powerful message, um, I think could be the right fit for so many people that might be struggling with self-doubt um, or lack of confidence or lack of, of belief in themselves to actually accomplish their goals. So I think that this is a tremendous opportunity for you guys to connect with new people and old ones. Um, and it's our job to not let people fail. So help them to see and get that glimpse of their potential in these challenge groups so that they can believe it for themselves and, and crush those plateaus and get through, um, you know, to the other side so that they can feel better and feel that life changing experience that we're able to give to someone. And I think that that's, yeah, that is it. So I know that was a lot of information and maybe not a shift shop specific. Uh, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to stick around and answer all of them. Wow. That was awesome. Um, really, I talk so fast. <laughs> like, I, don't, I mean, I don't think it was super fast. And you did a presentation. I didn't think you were going to do that after. Maybe I pulled it together. <laughs> my OCD type A-ness wore off on you. Um, yeah, Meredith, can you shoot me over those slides? Some Absolutely. Of them? Yeah, yeah, I'll upload them to the team page, Chrissy. So I see a bunch of questions in the chat. My preference is not to ask them for you. Just unmute yourself. Meredith doesn't bite and yes. ask away. I have a question. <laughs> Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm driving, so I'm hoping you can hear me. Yeah. Um, I'd love to chat more about Hydrate. Um, so mm -hmm. when we, I, I had the amazing opportunity to be in the Court of Force test group. Yeah. Um, and when we were chatting with, um, like, all the um, performance line guys, basically they kind of said that Hydrate was going to be used more for anything that was post 46 minutes. Yeah. So any of 12 rounds. Um, and so when I use hydrate right now, it's typically only twice a week when I'm teaching fitness classes, but can you talk a little bit more about, um, hydrate in the shift shop program? Absolutely. Yeah. So that was recommended in weeks two and three. Yeah. Two and three. I think I don't have the meal plan right in front of me. Um, it was either two and three or it was three. And then the, the last three weeks, because the way the program is structured is, um, the first week is 25 minute workouts and you have the same two workouts the whole week. So it's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday are the speed workouts. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday are the strength workouts, which are involving the weights. And then on Thursday and Saturday, you add the core workout in as well. So every, does that make sense, you guys? Like, and I can kind of like map that out for you. But, um, and then in the second week, you transition to 35-minute workouts. So it's speed on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which is the speed and agility. And then it's strength Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday with the core workouts on Thursday, Saturday. So getting into week two, your workouts on Tuesday and Thursday, including the abs, are gonna be about 50 minutes. So it does go beyond that time, and it's oh, pretty wow. intense. Um, but the thing is, they with Court of Force, I, don't, I loved Court of Force, like I like kickboxed when I was younger and stuff, so I was like, ah, it's my soulmate program. Like I loved it, but I'm not gonna lie, I started to feel like the workouts were really long towards the end. I was like, oh my God. I, and I was like procrastinating them. Like I'm so, we're so spoiled with our 30 minute workouts, right? Um, like 47 seems so long. But with the shift shop, and this is not dissing Corda Forest at all, um, the workouts really went by fast. And I don't know if it's the way they're structured, um, where it's, it's based on like circuit training. So in the strength, you're gonna have. Um, What's that? Oh no, I was just gonna say I love circuit training. Like I love like, you know, you have a minute here, a minute there, and then you just keep going and yeah. it makes it so easy because you don't yeah. have to And that's what's really there's not a huge commitment. Yeah, in the strength workouts, the way they're and even in the speed ones, you do like three 
a couple different formations with the markers and you do like the same moves. You'll do a move for 60 seconds just to kind of get the rhythm of it. Like you're not supposed to like kill yourself in the first 60 seconds. You're supposed to sort of like get the move down, get the footwork down. Then you do it again for like either 45 seconds or 30 seconds. And that's when you're going to go a little bit harder. And then in the longer workouts, you do a third round that's 30 seconds. And that's when you go all out and then you change formations. So it's like, okay, then you're, you're done with those exercises. You're moving on to the next one, which is really cool. And then in the strength ones, you do a lot of, um, like the first set is going to be 60 seconds of like one full move, like maybe a squat press, um, a squat press, like burpee or something. And then in the second round, you're going to do 15 seconds of just squat presses and then 15 seconds of just like burpee rows or something. So it's broken up. So it keeps it exciting and different. Um, yeah, and I mean, you're going to be sore. And that's the thing. Like, I was sweating my butt off. I've never sweat this much during a strength workout. Like, during weights, usually, like, you, you don't feel as sweaty. But I was like, oh, my God. So um, to get back to the hydrate question, I think that was in week two. And then in week three, the workouts are 45 minutes plus the 15-minute core on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, but, again, it, like, it flies by. And Chris Downing's really funny. Like, he's, like, such a – just a real normal guy, like in the, in the workouts, like he says the word toesies a couple times and he says, he says like all these cheesy things. It's like, if like Tony Horton and Sean T had a baby, it would be Chris Downing. Like, cause he's like funny and corny, but he's super motivational too. Um, and I just loved like listening to his messaging during the workouts too. So, so that was really cool. And then there's going to be a deluxe round two. I don't know if they've talked much about that, um, but that is 50 minutes long um, and then a super core, which is also 15 minutes. So that was round two. We did week two, week four, wait, sorry. Yeah, week two, week three, and then week four, which is the 50 minute workout. So those got long. So I'm not going to lie by the end of the second round, I needed a little breather. Like I was pumped about having Sean week, um, but I'm already so excited to do it again with my team. Um, but, for, but the hydrate was definitely necessary. And I was someone who was not a hydrate fan before. Like I was like, eh, I don't, I don't need that, but I'm so glad that I had it. Any other, so that was a really long answer. <laughs> That'd be really weird if Tony Horton and Shanti had a baby. Just yeah. To- <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I realized that as I said it, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I love that answer. I loved it. I was like, oh, Shanti, what, what happened? <laughs> yeah, when you guys will know what I mean, like when you, when you hear him, it's just so funny. He's, he's a riot. Yeah, he's great. He did, I don't know if you guys were on the call. He did a call for like the bigger page and it's on our team calls if you want to listen to it but his story is crazy um and it's all about second chances so yeah it's a good chance I I, I love the messaging behind this program you guys like it's just it really brought me back like kind of going back to the messaging of, of the call is like if you're not fired up about this like if you're not excited about where you're going with the opportunity or with your your physical like efforts like whatever you're 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 challenging yourself to do if you're not excited about it your your business is going to be flat because people need to see the energy they need to see someone excited about it and this gave me that like life again not to sound cheesy but it was just like i was so excited because it made me realize like this is so much bigger than us it's so much bigger than like me like trying to trying to get some biceps you know like it's like this is like about reinventing yourself you can be whoever you want to be like you know, you, and there's that quote out there that like, you don't have to be who you were last year, or last week, or even 15 minutes ago. Like you can decide now that you want to be whatever you want to be. And, and that's really what this, um, what the program is all about is just like getting a glimpse of your potential and then leaning into it and not taking those, you know, the easy way out or cutting corners. Um, and I think Chris Downing just embodies that whole message so well. So there's a lot of questions about the meal plan. Um, I did get a hold of one week of the meal plan, I want to say, plan A from someone, and it's in our Google Docs, guys, under the portion fix meal plan. It's just, if you search shift shop, it'll come up. But they're asking if, like, if it's set food or, like, if you have, like, if they say chicken, can you have fish, right? Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of flexibility. So it's flexible, like the 21 day fix. So you have your categories. Um, but some of the things are a little different. Like, so I was like, wait a second. Like I thought edamame was a blue and it's actually a yellow. 
in this plan. So I don't know if that's an adjustment that I just missed the memo on, but, um, but there's things that are a little bit different. And then there's a couple vegetables that are like crossover that can be a yellow, but can also be a green. So that I think I foresee a little confusion with that, with our customers are like, trying to explain to them. But if you can give people a meal plan, like it's outlined in the, the group, I don't think there'll be any confusion. And then just have a substitution tab. So if you want to have like tofu or fish instead of chicken or ground turkey, you can absolutely swap those. So there's flexibility there. Um, and I never felt hungry. Like it's a lot of food. And by the third week, like I was on the, the A plan, by the third week, I think I was having like at least 2,500 calories, if not more. Like it was like 2,500? Yeah. Like it was like, it was a lot. <laughs> so, cause I'm normally in like the, the 1200 to 1499 calorie or whatever, which I think is ridiculous. Like I never really drop below 1800 cause I take all the supplements and, and that stuff. Um, and I was definitely eating more vegetables than what they allotted. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of calories, but the workouts I was probably burning, like I was tracking on my, my watch, like at least six or 700 calories per workout. So when you're burning that much, you got to obviously be restoring the calories too. And I know for guys like Chris was wearing his watch, he would burn like over a thousand calories in some of the workouts. I'm like, what? This is insane. But it was so fun though. And that's, what's crazy. You don't feel like, I don't know how many of you have done insanity max 30, but that was like my, my other soulmate program. Yeah. I see Melissa like, yeah, that was, I loved that program. Like that was like all about the mindset and stuff. I freaking loved it. But I felt like I was going to die almost every yeah. time. Like, yeah, like, yeah, me too. I, I mean, I love, I love Shanti, and yeah. I think it's, it's almost in the same type of like field, right? Like they have yeah. the same concepts. Yeah, but I never felt the same like I'm gonna die feeling from the shift shop. Like there's a few times where I was like really breathless and sweaty, but there's breaks, so I never felt like like I hated my life. <laughs> like you know when Shanti's like, all right, find your life for a second. Like I, I'm like, okay, yes, thank you. I need to find it. Like I never felt like that in shift shop. Like I was like, okay, I'm good. Like I'm good. I'm sweating. I'm, I'm burning, but, um, but it was, it was a good feeling. So I did, I, we got an elite sneak peek and I did the sneak uh, peek with a, like most of the team on the day that it launched. Yeah. And like Meredith's right. I mean, any fit I'm, very pregnant at this point and I just modified pretty much everything like yeah and it's totally doable it's definitely like I've had a lot of I can't wait actually to share Jamie's results because I've seen them yeah definitely going to share that because I think that there's a lot of customers that think oh this isn't for me but it's in your mind like it's yeah. not yeah. Nothing. And I do plan on following the meal plan. I'll probably bump, bump up a calorie brick because I'm not going to eat at a de deficit pregnant. But yeah. the what's awesome about our plans, guys, is that they're like, if, if I can do a pregnant, it means it's a good eating plan. Like it means it's healthy. Right. So, um, I think that's super, super, super key. And, um, yeah. I'm really, going to try to hold the people that commit to this program accountable, my own challengers. And I recommend you guys do the same. Yeah. And I think you guys, you'll love it. I mean, it's just um, and I've gotten the habit of saying his full name because my fiance's name is Chris. So I just feel weird being like, and Chris demonstrates, but Chris Downing demonstrates the modifier every single time like you do a new exercise. So it's not like it's like this random person off to the side, like doing it and you're like, what are they doing? Like he shows you every single time. So there's no shame in that. And I modified a few times. So it was like, my abs are killing, you know? So like you're, there's no shame in that. And he really emphasizes that. And I think what's cool is like, you do the same workout Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So there was a little bit of re repetitiveness there. But what I found was by Friday, I was able to like blast through the workout because I knew the moves and like the muscle memory is there. So I was burning more calories by Friday too. So it's really cool how you can kind of ramp up. Like I wasn't a big fan of size and country heat. That's just like not my, not my thing. Like I would do size and I would literally do it for like four hours. Cause I'd be like, I gotta get the steps down. So the next day I'd have like whiplash and I'm like <laughs> so tired from doing the head thing. So like it wasn't, that wasn't productive for me, but, um, but it's kind of that same concept where like you're doing the same thing. So you can repeat it and master the moves, um, and feel, <laughs> feel like you move faster without the whiplash. <laughs>
That's hilarious. I, I was not a Max 30 fan, but I do like Chef Sean. I wanted to, I felt like you did. I was like, I'm going to punch Sean in the face every single day. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> like, I love you, but I hate you. Yeah. 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 But I, I have really liked, and it's a great program for couples, you guys. Like oh, yeah. my husband's not really going to do UV2 with me, let's be honest, yeah. but um, he has, he has fully committed to do shift shop the whole awesome. thing, meal plan start to finish. I'm really excited to see his results when we do it together. So, yeah. um, grab a buddy, your spouse and rock it cause yeah. you can, and it's a great way to get, you know, couples on board doing it together. Cause I think that it spans, all different types. Speaking of which, UV, if anyone done the UV2 like strength workout, it's really hard. I'm sore from it. I did it yesterday. It's all set up for less. <laughs> did you, have you done it, Meredith? No, I haven't. I haven't done, I end up like just cracking up through his workouts, but I really want to. I feel like I should experience it. So I'm on week four and there's like a strength workout. There's no weights, but it's like yeah. strength stuff. And no, I'm like sore. sore today. Yeah. This is yeah. Really shocking. So I have to say my, my wife and I did insanity max, um, 30 for the whole time. And, um, she was like, Oh, I'm a little sore, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. And we did the shift shop test. She was like, Oh my God, I'm so sore. I can barely move. And I'm like, uh, yeah, it's a little different. All different muscles. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you definitely have to make sure you're watching your form on it too. Cause it's really easy to like, I got a couple couple people that were in my Sean Week group that did the sneak peek, like pulled their back out and stuff. I'm like, oh shoot, like, you know, keep the back embraced, like lift from the legs, <laughs> like reminding people about those uh, posture cues. But all in all, I think people will really have a great experience with it. Anyone have any other questions before we let Meredith go? We've taken a lot of her time. You can. I, I do just real quick. Um, how is the program on people like with bad knees or bad backs or stuff like that? I think it's actually great because, because there is a modifier for everything and there are some like, you know, move to the floor moves, you know, like, like, but there's not a ton of jumping. Like there's this move called fence jumps where you're sort of like jumping over a make believe fence, but even that you can do just like high knees, like you can just like step. And so I think that there's like, honestly, anyone could do this. I think you just have to be able to modify it for your specific injury or limitation. Um, but Chris does a really good job of demonstrating that for every move. So I don't think that, like, I think honestly, anyone, even if it's low impact can do this. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really, and if you, if, did everyone do the sneak peek? Did anyone not do it? Totally fine if you didn't, just curious. So he demonstrates the moves with like arrows, which is different from any, I'm sure Meredith would agree. I haven't seen a program where they do that. And it really is going to help you, like someone like Chrissy talked about, prevent injury and protect your knees or back because it shows you exactly where you should be placing yeah. yourself. And he does it for that. And like Meredith said, the modifier too, which is yeah. super key. Yeah, it's it's like going to be life changing for so many people. I'm really really pumped about it. If you can't tell. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Um, is it is it de detrimental to have the little um uh markers? Yeah, the markers. Sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. <laughs> well, I had a few people ask me if they had to really buy those to do the shift shop. So yeah. So my team was asking the same thing and I actually just put up a post about that today and I gave them like five reasons why you should have it. Like, I don't know if I can rattle them all off in order, but number one is um, just that they're it's part of the program supplies. So I just tell people like, you're going to want to have them because he's going to be talking about them in you know, 50% of the workouts is going to be like, okay, you have your green or your yellow one here, your blue one here. So like if you're using paper plates or shoes or whatever, it's going to like, whatever, you can arrange them. Um, but I also think number two, it's kind of hazardous to have like a paper plate or something on the ground. Like, you know, you could slip on it. Even like some people are using like magazines. I'm like, ah, no, like I'm seeing like an ACL tear, like in my, in the future of that person. So, um, I think it's a little bit of a safety hazard because the agility markers are rubber and they stick. So they're a little bit more stable um, and they're also flat. So you're going to be doing like, there's a move called the bear crawl where you're basically on all fours with your knees two inches off the ground and you're going to be like 
crawling around over the markers, like in different like directions and formations. And if you're doing that over like shoes or something that's 3D, like again, it's just, they're going to get in the way. So um, that, and then also your audience is going to mimic what you do. So if they see you using those things, like, okay, that is not a bad thing, but if they injure themsel themselves because they saw you using those things, it's kind of on you, you know? So I'd say use, use the supplies and then they're worth 15 PV. So it's like, might as well, you know, have people buying them and then they can write their little message on them. And it's like, it's a win-win. You get the PV, they get the powerful message. Um, and I really think the program will have so much more meaning with that behind it. So um, just my two cents. They'll be at Summit too, if you guys don't want to pay shipping. They what? They'll be at Summit. How much are they? Uh, 15 bucks. Yeah. Did we get the coach price? Yeah. Oh yeah. At Summit, you get the coach price and they put the volume on your account. And, but I'm just saying like that, if you don't want to buy them right now, cause you don't want to pay the extra $5 shipping or whatever it is, you can buy them at Summit. You can even buy extra sets and ship them out yourself to your customers as a gift for joining the test group, say, right. It's a really good gift and always write that stuff off. This is my math business brain going. So yeah. Um, you can obviously order them online now and that's totally fine. But if you are going to summit and you don't want to pay for shipping, um, I have them, they, Beachbody sent them to me, but, um, Sydney ate my yellow one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, oh, no. I have yet to post about that. Um, so I need to do that, but I am going to get a second set and then Doug needs a set. So we'll grab another set at summit. Yeah. And I'll probably like, because I've already started that test group guys, I'll probably do like a fun giveaway while I'm at summit. Like, you know, Hey, who didn't get their markers yet and wants them like post your flex Friday or something. And I'll pick a winner. Fun. Fun. You could do fun stuff like that. Yeah. So it doesn't need the markers, um, taking them outside. We do our workouts outside a bunch of times and that was cool. Like it's a lot easier to do that than bring like a bag of shoes <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the field. Yeah. So. I think it'll just be all around. It will be a good $15 investment. Yeah. Cool. And I'm sure they'll announce the next program at summit. I'm sure it'll be, I have no idea what the heck is going on, but I'm sure there'll be more excitement. So, you know, we always have something coming down the pipeline, but I love that every program is so, I mean, I think about, you know, the last three things they've launched. So like UV2 and then Sean week and then chip shop. And they're so different, which is so key for us, you guys. And I think uh, Carol was saying they're going to do more product development around like seven day mystery workouts or whatever, like they did with Sean week because of the response to that. So I'm super excited for that. Like, cause I, I like that. I was like, I don't know what to expect. You know, when you log in, it's like a, you know, surprise workout. I just thought that was so fun. So, um, did you guys see Joel's surprise workout. Yeah. I was like, what is this? It was like hit and lift and hit. Lift yeah. And <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, it's very, very cool. Like we're definitely going in the right digital direction and having all access is so freaking key for us because, you know, as me, the worst salesperson in the world, if someone, if someone were to buy a DVD program and hate it, I have to tell them, oh, well then you have to buy something else. But now they buy all access, they, they buy it and they're going to start with 21 day fix. And they say, Jillian, I hate 21 day fix. Sweet. I got like 40 other programs you can try and you'd have to buy nothing. So yeah. Awesome. Super awesome. All right. Anything else? I know it's late. Okay. Well, Marta, thank you. That was amazing. No, no. Guys, no. I'll upload the call. The what? I'll send you the slides as soon as we're Yeah. Off. I will upload the slides in the call tonight before bed. If anyone has any other questions, just let me know. I'll send them to Meredith. We talk a lot. So, um, and if you're in the New England area and you have not gotten your tickets Super Saturday, do that. We cannot tell you who is coming yet, but as soon as it announced, the tickets are going to be gone. And we sold that last time. Um, and we probably could have sold like double the amount of tickets that we sold last time. Yeah. So make sure you get them. All right. All right. Good night, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank Bye. Bye.